everybody, kumusta ka na Welcome to Pinoy Cross for the Basketball Show for the Filipino community. My name is PJ. Joining me is Marky Mark with the scarf. Nice white. It's not snowing outside. No, but it's cold. I'm so. feeling it. Yeah. Feeling it. And we got our special guest. You know her. The legendary. I'm going to say you're legendary now. Because honestly. <laughs> the jersey's retired. So. Yeah. <laughs> once something's retired. Like, and then you're not. Yeah. So we got CJ Nafuente. Thank you for being here again. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we wanted to do this episode to really touch base on what you've been up to and really look at, I guess, because you just finished at Humber. Like Humber's yeah, done. Last year. Your career is done. So we want to, again, talk to you about like your work, your journey, being to Team Canada and going to the Commonwealth Games. So let's just jump into it. Talk about Humber and then the season ending and all that, all that, th- all that stuff that came with your season there. Uh, well... We went undefeated again, um, but even previous, before that, the uh, past year, we only got bronze at nationals. So it was really our fight to win, come back and win and prove to everyone why we're number one and why we think we thought we were the best. So yeah, undefeated season leading up to uh, nationals and we had a tough road. Uh, Three of the toughest games, the quarterfinal game, it came down to the wire Mm -hmm. of what? seven seconds on the clock coming down to hitting a buzzer beater shot and it happened to go in uh, pull, pull up elbow jumper uh, sent my team into uh, the semifinal game every game we had we were down at halftime so it was one of those okay we need to pick ourselves up we need to pick it up on defense and score mm-hmm. um, and then yeah we came out finishing the semifinal game with a win against the top team in Quebec and then playing another top team in Quebec in the finals, and which is like our rival game, basically. And leading up to that game, we had maybe a 10-point lead sometime in the fourth, which gave us a good cushion to win the game by, I think, 12, maybe mm-hmm. it was. And we had a lot of first years and second years on our team who's never been this far. And it was one of those just passing down the torch. You know, I've been there, I've done that, and this was just another, another milestone for me just to win another championship and now passing it on to my rookies and sophomores, basically. Let's go to passing it on. Did you know your jersey was going to be retired? Talk about your feeling. Did you know the ceremony was going to happen? Did they say, hey, before this game, we're just going to retire? They like, warned, yeah. Did they, they give yeah, you like a heads up? Like, like, how um, about? It was one of those. I, I was bound to break a lot of records mm-hmm. in, the, in the league and even the school. Um, so it was... It was known. It was. It was. There was. Um, how do you say it? There was. They were giving me hints to to know your jersey's gonna be retired one day, and it was on our last season home game. So which was nice. I had my family, my friends out there supporting me. Mm-hmm. Um, coaches gave out a nice speech, um, and even the athletic director and everyone else. And then I even said some words to my fans and family and friends, everyone that was there. So I, I kind of knew that day. And also, like, leading up to it, just because I, I, I put a lot on the court. I did a lot for the school. So it was, I felt it was only right. But at the same time, it was nice enough for them to do it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, there isn't much people who have their jersey retired. I'm curious, too, though. Um, when, when you started in, in Humber, what was your goal mindset coming into uh, to them as a first year as to how it has grown to what it was when you finally played your last game at Humber? Uh, it was tough. Uh, they weren't one of the best teams in the league, right? Um, and that's I like it like that, where I'm not on the best team, where we were the under, uh, sorry, not underdogs. We just come from the bottom, make our way to the top. Um, and the coach, me and the coach had a had a connection uh, that he basically handed me the keys, handed me the ball, and basically said, "This is your team, and you know what? We're gonna work together and make this one of the best teams there is." Um, leading up, leading up to it, uh, it was my f- third year where we won our first national championship game. So it wasn't right off the bat where we we won everything. So it, it was a process, and it was one of those where the coach trusted me, and I trusted him, and everyone else, and my teammates, all the coaching staff, from therapy to our high performance staff, where uh, I'm gonna help build this team to where it needs to be. And which helped on leading up to even now. Um, they're doing pretty well. I think they're eight and one right now or seven and one. Mm-hmm. One loss is pretty good in a season when I'm not there or even my 
go-to Alina Domingo isn't there anymore. So mm -hmm. they have a lot of second and third years where I played with them and now they're leading the team. So my work, I, I feel like my work was done where I passed on the torch. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about your relationship with your coach? Um, talk about things that he taught about taught to you and what do you carry now that you've moved on to other basketball endeavors? Mm, our relationship, uh, it was pretty good. It mm. wasn't, there wasn't really headbutts. There wasn't much of that. It was, I understand everything he was trying to teach the team. And because I understood it, he didn't have to teach me, mm. which made it like I was an extension of him on the court. So if he couldn't get to the girls, he knew I would be able to get to the girls. Mm -hmm. And that made it easier for him to coach because now he's not worrying about us running a play wrong or us or me not calling the right play. Like if I call the play, after, say you're on my team and you just hit a shot. He know the coach trusts me enough to run a, sh a type of shooting shooter play for you. Mm -hmm rather than going off the page and running something else when I know you just hit a shot. So mm -hmm. it was that type of connection where he basically trusted me enough to make the right calls. Or if not, I look over to him and be like, okay, what should I call? I call it and then I find the slips or do whatever's needed. Mm -hmm. I know in one of the articles that I read, he said that y you, were, you are once in a lifetime player <laughs> that will turn up at Humber. Does that mean a lot to you? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Um, those type of words coming from your coach, playing for him for five years, it, it was, it's a lot. It, it, it means a lot just to know that I meant something to him, but even like everyone around us, the whole community, the whole school, there's a lot of people supporting us along the way. And once in a lifetime player, those are kind words, but it's, it's something you dream of, right? You, you leave your mark and then you leave your legacy and then people look back and like, oh my God, CJ No Fuente played here, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's a good school. Or... How does it feel like for you? I mean, because we look through and you have like records that you broke and like statistically, like, how did you feel when you realized that you were like the all time in terms of points, rebound, assists, steals and blocks? Like how did that feel to you in terms of the work that you put in? Uh, it wasn't really about the individual accolades. It was more about winning as a team, winning championships, right? That can come, I could have got that if I was a selfish player and got losses under my belt. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it was more about winning and it was just a bonus that I was able to score a lot of points or able to get a lot of rebounds, assists, steals, whatever it was. So if it wasn't for my team, I wouldn't have been able to do half of that. If my team couldn't score, I wouldn't have assists. If my team didn't guard the way they did, I wouldn't be able to help and get a steal. So mm -hmm. a lot contributes to everyone else around my team, and I thank them for that. It just made it easier for me to just pack my stats, basically. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy how you became, what, tri triple OC OCA player of the year, yeah. of the year and, and you were back-to-back -back CCAA? Or and uh, the... Three times uh, National Player of the Year yeah. and then three times OCAA Athlete of the Year, like across all sports. Yeah, oh my. Like that, that accomplishment in itself probably, and, and you had an injury. Yeah, like, my first year coming into yeah. Humber. So getting those awards after an injury, did that build you up a lot? Like how did, like it, to, to win those awards, like in general is good, but yeah. to win it also after an injury, yeah. something that you, again, like it's a dream to you, mm -hmm. right? Can you talk about, um, how did Team Canada contact you or like where was your connection with Team Canada moving on after Humber? Um, well, I played the previous year um, in 2016 after that bronze medal um, game at Nationals. Um, I, I've tried out for Team Canada maybe the past years, a couple years. And so um, I first joined Team Canada on their development team for, for the FISU team, mm -hmm. which is um, if you're in college or university, you're chosen to compete against countries across the world in a, in a tournament with all sports. It's a, like a, a University Olympics, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I first played, and I first got to wear, wear Canada across my chest, which was a dream come true. You know, you'd only dream to play for your country. Mm -hmm. um, and then following that year, there was the Commonwealth Games, so last year. Um, 
and that was like a hand-picked team. Some people on, that were on the senior team, some people that I played with on the FISU team, some people playing overseas. So it was a mixture of girls that have played at maybe when they were U16, U17 across the board. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, basically Team Canada allowed me to play and be part of that, that tournament, which is amazing, right? Like I said, playing for your country, if you played for Philippines, you know, dream yeah, come true, yeah. right? So playing for Canada, another dream. Being able to play for another uh, big tournament. So, you know what? The next goal is Olympics. Who knows? Maybe yeah. one day. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. And they did, They took some epic pictures, too. Yeah, like, if nice. I could just pull up some pictures, yeah, like yeah, the dark. Find it. <laughs> I, I see those pictures, but can you talk about, like, your teammates? Like, did you know some of them already coming in? Or how did you, like, how did you try to gel with them? And um, Well, mainly, <coughs> like, growing up in Ontario, I played against a lot of girls in high school. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those girls... At the elite level, they've either went NCAA Division One, um, and then they were they also played for Team Canada growing up. So being able to play against a lot of these girls, um, you grow a connection. Um, you don't always have to play on, be teammates with someone to have a connection or be friends. So just being able to play with against each other and know you're one of the best and I'm potentially one of the best. Hey, like what's up? Like you know, you're yeah. you're good. Like I see you. Like, you know, Game respect, great, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. great recognized great. That's it's exactly it. So just being able to play against them and I've seen them around, like, you know, growing up around basketball, everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. So when you finally make a team, it's like it's instant. It's right there, like as if you, you knew each other from five, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't it's not hard. Even when you just go go to court runs somewhere, it's even fun. though you they're random strangers you're, you're going to eventually, by the end of the game, uh, by the end of the night, you're probably going to go to eat or something, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's just basketball is one of those, those games where you're going to make friends, m meet new people, and network. Mm -hmm. Just to summarize here, um, how would you describe your whole experience with Humber and, Can and uh, Canada basketball? Like, if you were to describe it, summarize it. Summarize <laughs> quick, like in a go. quick, like how would you, like, your feelings about it? Or so? I would say it's epic. Um, mm -hmm. but basically, I can talk from Humber being my, my record personally mm -hmm. 100 wins and three losses. Where do you hear that? Mm -hmm. Right? You can then again say being the only um, team across Canada from Ontario to win a national championship. So, not a team from volleyball, not a team from soccer. We're the only team from Ontario to win a team sport across Canada. That's mm -hmm. another epic moment. That's something you, you know, you can't, you don't really talk about. Mm -hmm. But then again, in Team Canada, being playing college basketball and being able to make it on Team Canada, that, like, mm -hmm. you know, these are these are things that I've done where it's a dream, yeah. right? It's something you work so hard for, and sometimes you never think it's going to happen, and. Boom, it happens.